Hey guys, I figured I'd let you catch up on my latest project here. Uh, the other week I was uh, down at the range shooting my trusty 1911 and I noticed the casings were uh, getting thrown a little farther than I wanted. So I usually run a, an 18 pound spring in it and uh, it just seemed too easy uh, to pull the slide back. So I had another one I threw it in, but I still wanted a way to test the uh, recoil springs. There's testers out there on the market and guys are making them and uh, so this is my version of it. Uh, it's nothing more than a piece of 3 8 steel pipe. Uh, this was just a regular 3 8 cap I turned down on the lathe. This is a reject. This is the finished one here. I got some still pictures I'll show you too. Uh, the hard thing for me to find was a 5 16 uh, 8 inch bolt that wasn't threaded all the way. I didn't want any threads in the middle here to uh, disrupt any of the readings. So this is just a piece of uh, 5 16 rod that I threaded, you know, just far enough to uh, put my coupler on there. I put a nut on there and I uh, braze that on and then I just turn that round uh, on the lathe. So it just slides in and out of the pipe nice. So no resistance there. This is a uh, 5 16 coupler. Just drilled a hole and put a uh, key ring uh, holder on there. And a cheap fish scale that I picked up at Walmart. Uh, this is a 50 pounder. Uh, I see a lot of guys using 25 pounders and stuff like that. The way I figure a scale is most accurate in the middle of its range. So the middle of this range is 25 pounds. I'm reading, you know, roughly 18 pounds. So this, I think this is a little more accurate scale than a 25, which is putting it close to its max. So I got some still photos of things before I turned them. I didn't want to run the camera and try to run the lathe at the same time. And, uh, and we'll take it from there. Okay, this is the, uh, the working of the cap. Uh, you can see the first photo here. That's what it came from the store as. Just looks like a regular cap. I wanted to clean this up some. Uh, I had a short chunk of uh, pipe, the same diameter and in interior as the uh, one I used. So I chucked that up in the lathe. I got my uh, center hole uh, drilled into the cap. Then I went in with my uh, finished 5 16 bit, got that board out, <clears throat> and then I started turning the outside of the cap itself. Uh, and you can see it gets turned down nicely. Then I can flip it in the uh, chuck of the lathe and do my interior work. Uh, you can see on the photo here that the inside of the cap has a slight radius inside there. I wanted that flat so the spring sat in there good. So I chucked that up into the lathe. I have a small bit that's almost like a mini boring bar and went in there and just flattened that area out. And then the finished one you can see that it has a nice flat area for the spring to sit in. Okay, as far as the build, the pipe is, you know, pretty much what it is. The only thing is, is there's a weld seam inside these pipes, and it was protruding inside there. I didn't like that. I didn't want any drag in there. So I was trying to figure out how I could get that uh, seam to, uh, to blend in with the rest of the pipe. I found that a half-inch drill bit, I could go in, knock the high part of the uh, weld down, and that got it roughly into round. I still wanted to see it a little bit smoother, so you know I didn't have a file or anything fancy to uh, to really smooth it out. So what I ended up doing is I took uh, I think this is a 3/8 dowel. I wrapped sandpaper around it, and I just kept on cutting the sandpaper back until I could actually get the sandpaper in there like that and I hooked that onto my drill and then I could turn the drill on and go in and smooth out the inside. That gave it a pretty good finish on the inside. Uh, that was that. <clears throat> uh, the cap 
uh, I turned down all the way around uh, so I could reverse chuck it in the lathe inside I don't know if this thing will focus or not but inside it wasn't flat where the spring would rest so I chucked that up in the lathe went in there with a bit and flattened that area out so now the uh, the spring has a flat area to sit on uh, the rod itself the crucial number is that when this rod goes through this now it's bottomed out uh, I put a mark on the bottom there and then I measured out uh, 625 uh, 1.625 is the number you want to see when the thing is sitting at zero here uh, that is the compression ratio for that spring for a full-size 1911 uh, the numbers on the other are if it's a commander that number would be 1.125 if it's an officer it would be 0.700 uh, that would be your full compression rate on the springs so that's pretty much all that and then we'll uh, we'll assemble this thing and uh, I'll show you how it works okay here we go uh, I just hook my uh, pipe and my uh, vise right here this way I don't have to hold both ends like that that's good for that and then uh, we take our spring uh, when I uh, when I redid the caps I had a little bit different depth uh, setting that messed my markings up if you look at this closely I put two small grooves in on the lathe this way I know where my, where my uh, where my compression height is the first one is to warn me that I'm getting close the second is the one that I actually pull to so all I had to do to make up the difference is I just made a, uh, a small shim that slides over this now when I put it in and measure from the cap to this mark right here that is my 1.625 so do that I always put the flat end of the spring to the top we put that on like so we take the coupler and just thread that on there and we just put this right into there and the cap doesn't even have to be tight tight it just has to hold everything together all right now I gotta swing the camera around so you can see everything here turn this on let it zero out okay hook our scale in there and and there's a hold feature on there so I don't even watch the scale until I get it pulled back to that line and there's mark hit the hold okay that showed me 16 1 and I usually do it several times and then just get an average on it zero okay Sixteen six. It takes a little getting used to to get the the proper technique, but you can see this eighteen pound spring is uh, not eighteen pounds anymore. And back. And watch for my first mark. There it is. There's my second. Okay. I've got a bad reading on that. We'll do it again zero okay 1610 so they're all within the ballpark of the 
of the three numbers there. So that is telling me that this spring is no longer what it was. You know, 18 pounds seem to be good in my gun for the loads I'm running. And this way I can just leave this thing in the vise if I want a couple of springs to test. I tested it against uh, brand new ones and they pulled in pretty close what they're supposed to. Uh, I've heard roughly uh, 2,000 rounds on a recoil spring uh, in 30 years of running this 1911. I don't know how many recoil springs I've been through. Uh, a lot of rounds. So this is my latest uh, endeavor here. So I just wanted to share it with you guys and uh, hope you like it. Maybe you guys will, uh, you know, get intrigued and make one for yourself. Uh, didn't cost that much. I think this was 18 bucks over at Walmart. Uh, the pipe I got at the hardware store. Uh, that was a few bucks. Uh, the biggest pain in the neck. If you can find a 8 inch pre-made bolt 516 because that's perfect size for the inside of the uh, recoil spring uh, that beats what I did I just couldn't find one locally uh, you really don't have to turn the cap down like I did you could probably just get away with uh, drilling the hole uh, I did find that uh, what happened on the first one was I had the hole too big uh, I was thinking give it a little room but what was happening with that was actually the tip of the spring was actually catching in the hole. So I pretty much drilled the hole to the size of the bolt, not giving it much room at all. Uh, so that's, uh, that's about it. Uh, hope you guys are inspired and try for yourself.